pretty damn good. You know, after hearing it in my headphones, I agree. I like that song. Yeah. It wasn't good. as good on my it speakers, had, but... like a little bit of hip hop, and then you can hear a little bit of that. Yeah, you know, like kind of Asian. There. A, uh, uh, what's it? Uh, Asian. The in there, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I was, I was enjoying it. Like I said, it was, it was better in the headphones when I could hear the bass better. I don't, I don't have, <laughs> uh, I don't have any bass speakers right now. Like I my little tweeters. So it's just all I am getting is like the high end for it. It's still <laughs> good, but it's way better with the bass. Uh, no, I really enjoyed it. I think there's going to be a lot of people up and down on this, no matter what, because it's no superpower related kind of stuff. So that I mean... a little bit. I think they can get away with that. Um, but we've yeah. already we got Black Widow, and she, she don't true. got any superpowers. So I think Very they can true. get away with that. That I don't think is the problem. I think the biggest problem, honestly, is. Uh, they don't have the connection that they did for the Guardians, where you have like a whole team. They do have their little duo, which is definitely helping it out already, and you can see that that's like creating more interactions that they can write. But I think the fact that Shang Chi, even in Marvel comics, is a very solo act. You yeah, know what I mean, like when you see Shang Chi. Yeah, yeah he, if if ever at all he shows up in a feature he you know he barely got his own comic because he, he's had him before and his it's well established his history with the master of kung fu and yeah. he had his whole run on the avengers during avengers world um but just generally i'm just generally speaking shang chi is not uh miss marvel or uh deadpool or spider-man or any of these characters who even write like miss marvel not being a super popular like everybody knows kamala khan but in the sense that she's often in other people's books right she's often working with miles morales she's often doing stuff with the champions etc and so i think that one of the biggest strengths of the mcu is how connected it is you know what I mean? Like every movie leads into every movie. Every character is kind of somehow, you know what I mean? Knowledgeable of other characters, even if they're not yeah. familiar. I'm so I'm curious, yeah, how that kind of connects you towards, yeah. you know, bigger and picture. So, of the... Yeah, because even in Guardians, right? Even though that the thing is, I think it's going to do well regardless, because it's and just speaking on demographics, it's going to do well in China. Oh, it's, just, yeah. it's just going to do well regardless like it doesn't matter yeah. how good the movie is it doesn't matter <laughs> unless it's like extremely racist somehow it's probably it's gonna do yeah, well in China. Not gonna happen that, like monster <laughs> no marvel marvel is fairly good especially after having seen most the season of falcon winter soldier i can definitively say that marvel is very good at addressing race I still At need least, to finish the last two episodes maybe of that. Not behind the scenes, mind you, because that's not necessarily true. But on screen, they are they do a pretty good job, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I feel like the messages are there without like feeling like they're being pushed too in, into the narrative, right? Like it's not unnatural or mm. like a catchphrase where you say the title of the movie totally out of place. You know what I mean? It's it's kind of like uh, just naturally built into the story. And so I think they do a pretty good job. I think it'll be really cool. And I'm I'm honestly excited. Having seen the animations, the choreography for the fighting, or I said, should say the visual effects, not the animations, but the all that stuff, it looks good. I, I think it's going to be a good movie. I mean... Yeah, I think they're, they're going to do a good job on this. Yeah, oh, I feel like it's going to be good. I, I um, absolutely think, like I said, I think their biggest problems are minor problems. They're very, they're things they've either addressed before or shouldn't really be an issue for for regular people, right? So, like, the one big issue being, like, he's just totally unknown. But we've kind of had that with Guardians already, right? So that's not yeah. totally out of left field. Yeah, we could still do that. <laughs> I, I think I think it, we needed to have something like Guardians before doing Shang-Chi, but... Uh, I mean, even Ant Man is a good example, kind of of that yeah. being like Ant Man's a, a very obscure kind of character. It's just like I, I'd say less obscure than Shang Chi, but still definitely, yeah, but still definitely like, obscure. Really, Ant Man people yeah. probably when they first heard that. 
<laughs> True, but some comic book people probably haven't heard oh, of Shang-Chi. Sure, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, the regular, the general audience, they're probably, when they first heard that, they're like, really? What the hell is an, you know... No, absolutely. It doesn't ring too well, but... Uh... No, for sure. And once again, I think that they've, like, that's their biggest hurdle to overcome, and they've already kind of proven that they can do yeah. that in the past. So, so it's not going to be an issue. I pretty have some high hopes with it. Oh, yeah. And then uh, my... Especially, uh, I told you, I'm, I'm excited just because uh, uh, I'm a f- big fan of Aquafina, so I'm excited that she's kind of, <laughs> yeah. a, uh, she's kind of in this uh, movie. <laughs> in this... <It's> like... <laughs> Honestly, I'm just happy that we get to see any form of, like, kind of the Mandarin and its Ten Rings. Oh, my gosh, I've... man. After the whole debacle, what was it, Iron Man 3? Dude, and the thing is, people are still mad about it, right, in this, because they're like, well, Mandarin's not... Shang Chi's dad. I was like, yeah, but are you really gonna write the master of kung fu into this? I mean, they've they've written things differently already. I mean, they've done it with the Infinity Stones. Yeah, Those everything. Are the it's, same stones from the, the comics. Point, the point is, it's it's not the same, right? But it's similar enough it's, yeah, that it's yeah. it's just not a real issue it's for me. Take, you know, and then the... I, I saw people who were mad about them being armbands now, and I was like, what do you mean? That design is sick. Oh, yeah, 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 I see what you mean. Okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I get, like, having the ten rings and all, but one, armbands are way more combat practical, and two, yeah, know. they look so Yeah, cool. they just have to, you know, people just don't think they have, some things just don't go well from comic to... to right, movie. I don't think the rings would have worked good. I don't think they'd be visually aesthetic, and it's too similar to the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, and that's another One thing of the too. Rings like, lights you, up. All the time you think about it, it's like they're both rings. They both light up. They both... That right? They only you can only use one at a time for the Mandarin's rings. From what I remember, I think he could only use one ring at a time, or maybe that was just for one issue. Who the f- knows? It's been a minute since I even read. Last thing I read from the Mandarin yeah, was when the Punisher <laughs> shot him in the face. That's yeah, been a long time. <laughs> That one was like last year, but it was like it was like a random appearance so that the Punisher could shoot the Mandarin in his comic. <laughs> that was it, it, was, it was and it was great. It was well written. It made sense. It wasn't like oh Frank got the drop on him. It was like no Frank went and bought a magic bullet, set up a thing, and then shot him in front of the UN. <laughs> it was planned out, right? It was it was Punisher versus that. the universe. Um. So yeah, it was good. Uh, good everything. I, what do you think of the suit? Like his uh. Kind of costume. I, like it's kind of rough for me because, like, I don't feel like Shang Chi's had a very consistent. I mean, a little bit of a consistent comic outfit, but I don't know. you can sure sure it's got that MCU like style though. For sure, because oh, I'm looking sure. at the, the poster and. Oh yeah, I, I'm not looking at. I was just looking at the thing. Let me look at the poster and get a better look at it. Uh, let's see. Oh, it definitely has that Marvel vibe. You know what it kind of reminds me of? It's going to sound weird. And it's just going to sound weird coming from me. But no, it's just going to sound weird because of the way it is. I It looks like a little bit like Superman suit, just the patterning, not the style. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Just as this that. textured, you know what I mean, kind of cross-stitching. Yeah. And I don't like it at all for Superman suit, but I kind of like it here. So I feel no. like a hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I wanted to ask you? Did you see the Modoc trailer now? now that I, we first, oh, did I check that out already? Did we? Yeah, I mean, did we you know, look at the Modoc trailer. Was very, no, we didn't. But that was very because it just came out like four days ago. I was very okay. skeptical about this show, and you know, it looks okay. You know, it's I'm pretty good. I'll say it's all right. I'm skeptical, but not because of what I feel like everyone else's skepticism is. Which is that it's Modoc, kind of. I mean, not, 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 not yours Modoc, necessarily, I but like... I mean like regular people. Because like I was even having, oh, the, yeah, yeah, I, see I was having a know. conversation with one of my friends in Discord, and he's just like, "Oh yeah, that's just the garbage." And I was like, "So you just, so you don't like Modoc?" And he's like, "Yeah," because he's like, "And why don't you like Modoc?" Well, and I basically like got him to admit it's just like it's just his design, just the way it's he just, looks. I mean, it is a very weird looking design. It's a big fat the, head. The thing is, it's I, I think we talked about funny, it. Like, what was his, what does his name stand for? Um, um, modified organism designed only for killing. Yep, there you yep, go. Like even the name is just like kind of wacky. <laughs> it's a little bit, but I uh, think of it about I think about two things. One, the time that uh, when he was being created, when yeah. he was being created at Modoc's establishment, which I think is pretty early on in Marvel's history. Uh, bu- 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 1967. So yeah, he's been around quite a long time. This is following like 
oh, and d- occurred during the a, a pretty decently heavy time of the uh, kind of like the Soviet stalemate stuff after World yeah. War Two, where we're not really kind of fighting the Soviets, but we're also, or maybe it's past that. I forget exactly how the timeline goes because there's a there's a lot that goes straight, not straight from World War Two. But goes from after World War II and then resurfaces later. I don't know. That that whole period of time in history is so fucked. <laughs> but uh, from what I remember so, during these times is like nuclear war was a kind of thought. And so like body yeah. dysmorphia from radiation. The Hulk is from a similar kind of. Concept. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. And I think a lot of characters designed around this time kind of have some kind of body dysmorphia like this. Not not necessarily so, so like Moda. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of other villainous characters that appeared around 1960. Uh, villains with body. Well, to celebrate, Modoc Hasbro released his <laughs> Legends figure. At least they did this Modoc and not the cartoon Modoc. <laughs> oh yeah, no, 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 no. yeah. They, they, you know they were no, gonna that's do dope, that. though. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy Modoc. to see it because Modoc is one of those characters that is absolutely kind of a gag character. That's the other thing, yeah, like, especially like, nowadays, like, yeah. like his his most recent nemesis is Gwenpool. Yeah, that's what I, uh, I was going to say. You, the most yeah. recent stuff I've seen is just a Gwenpool with him. Yeah, and, and that's it's there. The, it's funny because his true nemesis is Iron Man. Oh, goddamn light bulbs. <laughs> having a rave over there. <laughs> I must be. Now I look like I'm in serious mode. But uh, yeah, this one, if you haven't checked it out, it, it it's kind of... I'll have to check it, because I'd only seen, like, the teasers, I think, that they put out, the not the full trailer. The way like, he, he, like, um, goes in, you know, acts like being Modoc, like, you know, the Modoc we know from the comics, he's just being evil and stuff, and then, wh- then he goes in, like, what, he, what we don't know what he's doing the rest of the time, he goes and, like, acts his as, home like, life. his father. Which, it's, as a- <laughs> it's funny, because I don't know if you were reading the uh, Modoc series, comic series they put out. Yeah, which is that's what I heard it's kind of more recently been kind of it feels like it's tied to that comic a little bit. I think it's more like nodding. So in this one, Modoc is seeing the even these characters like the daughter. It looks like her, like the one from the video. Sorry. Oh, oh okay. Uh, I think I gotta take another look at her. I think that was. I mean, it looks like oh, it's no, like he has a, a son in this one. To, right. um... So they changed it. So in this one, he has a son. It looks like. Okay. Oh no, he does have a daughter as well, and it looks just like she does in the comic. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, she's just got like these bangs, and I'm gonna t- take a shout here, and hopefully not spoil it for anyone who cares or gives a fuck. But she's lesbian. I'm almost absolutely sure from what I remember from the comic, unless they're not the same. But I- I'm pretty sure well, I remember that. Want to see yeah, how much? Uh, uh, yeah, it was just put in a panel where she was very. It was. It wasn't like I'm lesbian or anything like she outright says it. Just one but of those you, things are kind of written in there and you just know uh, it. Was, it's basically like a memory scene, right? So the, in the comic, the oh. difference is it's not like his real side life that he goes to when he's not being a villain. His memory banks have been corrupted with something. And so okay. like he's having he's like, I'm having these memories oh. that I can't that aren't real. They're not Modoc, and they're they're fucking with him in real time. You know what I mean? So he'll like jits out and. Huh. Start killing people for that no reason. Like a pretty good uh, miniseries. I've, it was, I've, it was I, good. I, it's. I it's, gonna check it out, I, but maybe yeah, I'll I, check it straight I'm out. I'm gonna say this with zero like basis for the argument, but right now Marvel is in just in my personal opinion writing villain books better than DC. Yeah, they have. I told you, I really enjoyed that and, Taskmaster and, uh, and issue. I won't, yeah, and I'm not going to, like, say it for the Joker, because, I mean, the Joker's the best villain of all time, basically. But, just statistically... <laughs> he is a good, he is good uh, villain. What is it? He's just, like, he always hits the number ones. He's the most popular villain by His country. comics are pretty good. His little, uh, He's, his, his, and that's, why, that's the other thing. Joker right comics now. are almost always good. Like, there's... I don't know if I can remember a Joker comic off the top of my head I don't enjoy. Or even offshoots that I don't like care about the characters as much like when punchline got her stuff i still read those because they're joker related or i like a new, a new one that's coming which one uh i think her name's miracle molly for that's batman weird. i still wanted a clown killer from series did you like that one the clown clown hunter what was his name clown, yeah, clown hunter no it was clown hunter you're right clown okay. hunter i forgot 
I, I just thought you know, it was a cool I idea. Damien does pretty good, you know. He's no, the one no, that he was a, he was he does good writing. I've been enjoying it for sure. I'm I mean, there's ups and downs going because he was only supposed to do like this Joker War stuff, and then that was about it. And then I'm glad he got to do more than the Joker War stuff because I didn't like the Joker War stuff at all. I heard you didn't really care for it too much. Was was he what the one doing jokes and riddles too, or was that his uh, start? Uh, that might, I think he started on like issue ninety, yeah, it like issue eighty eight i think on batman because jokes and riddles was great or the war of jokes and riddles that might be him i don't know I'm I, check. I'm, yeah it was like issue 89 or 88 he started on no that one's tom king but that's fine i mean i've, I've read since that and i've been enjoying batman he does good writing i just didn't enjoy the three jokers it just that one basically that one shot oh was, that little in series that one yeah, yeah I like he did that one that was um yeah was... he did lead up to three jokers right he started writing when the arc was going to or remember. after three jokers but i can't remember who wrote that one i think I it's a pretty can... good writer i just i didn't enjoy it and honestly if you're a super big batman fan and the only thing you care about is nostalgia i i think well, that's, that's the I perfect a lot of people oh, say yeah, that it's super nostalgic. Of, yeah but I, it didn't. I tried to read it. I have it, it was, on my, on my list. You should check it out right and there. let me know because I'm one. I'm not always right. Uh, everybody's, you know what I mean. The opinions. So you might really enjoy it. You know what I mean. We we both have ups and downs on comics we've liked or not liked. Uh -huh. But uh, two just to see because it really is like a very elegant uh prose on like pulling together how the Joker is as well as just explaining why there are three jokers that part's good what i didn't like is the overall execution of the plot huh. but other than that there's great parts in it there's hmm. there's really great parts i have several like screenshots already up on the page from oh, three jokers because okay. there's really cool stuff in there like the facts and the uh, things that are said or like you know just little tidbits of information that are given but i felt like the overall plot was lacking a little Okay. Whereas this is like a really cool big event, and I wanted like a a really kick ass, super mm. kick ass plot. Mm. Um, and it's, it's the premise is really dope too. It's really a good idea. Like the whole thing about it is really well, well thought up. I think. So, were you able to check out uh, Demon Slayer this weekend? No, uh, it's just not really high on my list. Demon Slayer, oh, I don't think it's all that great. I mean, oh, no. we love it. The, anima the animation is great, but if I oh, yeah. watch things just for animation, I'd be watching much higher quality uh, VFX than just animation. I watch mostly things I watch for the plot or a combination of the plot. That's why I read the original One Punch Man, because that thing looks like garbage. Like literally, yeah, just, like it was drawn by ten. I, I can never watch this because I told you I'm not a fan of it. Once again, like, it's not even the story at that point. The original art for One Punch Man, and that's why I said too. The art just looks really, I looked, crazy. and then they took that, and this is still the same kind of. Oh no, the uh, no, nah, the new art the... blows most people out of the water. The um, Murata Yusuke is think, easily you know? one of the best uh, illustrators in manga right now. Ah. He did Ice Shield 21 and a couple of other anime, and he did the redo for One Punch. The original One Punch Man the looks like... Now for re <laughs> that, that's the only one you've ever seen. I guarantee you've never seen the original One Punch Man. Yeah. Guaranteed it. Nobody... You'd have to go look for it, for one, because it's totally separate than the one that's released with Shonen Jump. The original <laughs> One Punch Man is released on Webtoon, and it's oh, actually... So he started off like that, kind of. Uh, he's actually been a manga author for years well, no, I mean, that, 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 that show one did yeah 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 it started off as a webtoon and he only made the the series to test his drawing software like he okay. had a new manga like paneling software yeah, or something messing around. so he literally released it and had no intention of continuing it because he didn't give a shit it was only after like people kept bugging him that he made more and then the only reason that he got into Shonen Jump, because they would have never allowed those drawings in Shonen Jump, was yeah, because uh, the, is... yeah, the artist Murata Yusuke offered to draw the series, redraw the series for him in a better quality. Because okay. even the anime, the anime second season is garbage. The first one's a pretty decent animation because I think they were with, who were they with? Madhouse? I don't remember who they were. They were with a good animation studio the first season, and the second season wasn't. 
but even those animation studios i don't think fully demonstrated the uh the quality of the original art from the series Mm -hmm. because he has some really good uh like shading he's a really good shader and it, it, it comes out so good in that black and white manga style that's just not quite as good having said that he's not like one punch man itself is not that right like murata yusuke is the artist that makes that happen and he's his ma- manga is uh i shield 21 hmm. which is another really popular football manga oh my gosh one of those ones like that it's actually one. really good i hate i hate, no, I hate every single sports anime i hate haikyuu i hate prince of tennis i hate all of them but i love seen the double butt punch or what's that one called the one where I, they're yeah, oh there's, there's, I this, them, I don't watch them. there's this ridiculous one literally where the girls but, are like sumo wrestling but they're like hitting each other with their butts to get and, out of the ring <laughs> and i don't know why i like one punch man and not these other ones maybe it's because i like football more because it does basically the same thing in where it gives you a realistic uh set for the game right like they, they don't it's not like they have superpowers and are playing football or any of that and they are teaching you how to play football as you play or as you read or watch through right the same as like prince of tennis or haikyuu so i don't know why i like that one and not the others i have no idea there's literally no clue i think it's because it has a really good mix of cartoon anime comedy on top of the kind of more realistic thing so even though they are not running at supersonic speeds when they show him run it looks like an anime you know what i mean yeah no one's that, saying he's going yeah. but he's like he's so no, fast they can't catch him just, yeah that's just the way they're yeah, are. yeah once again that's how they are and i think the difference is uh i shield kind of like leans into it more and so it becomes comedy or stylistic as opposed to kind of super super annoying all the time it still can be a little annoying but yeah the, the, those ones are I don't know. I don't like sports anime. <laughs> I mean, I don't really care. I don't care for them either. I, I mean, just, I, don't, I don't think I've, I don't think I ever did watch one that I. Like no, I said, I would also so. not suggest watching the I Shield Twenty One anime because it's just not as good as the manga. It's not well paced. Okay. It just doesn't transfer the medium as well. I don't believe, or they didn't do the transfer as well. Which is one thing I will say about Demon Slayer and them. They are doing an excellent job of like pacing out without like overextending anything yeah i mean it's been good i mean i really enjoyed the the story the uh, the english voice actor when he's crying though could uh, i don't listen i don't watch I, <laughs> I, uh, that's, that's okay but other than that but, uh, I, I, it's good for what it is i like I, the once again so i think and it's one of those things that i is there's a line right of like where people judge things and appraise them differently each person so like i don't want to praise uh when i'm appraising demon slayer or uh the new one if you haven't seen it jujutsu kaisen it's pretty good uh, i heard about that one it's pretty good. um the, the thing is i f- i never like rank the anime solely based on the animation itself because if mm-hmm. i did there would be some really like boring anime that made it up there but I recognize that they're really good, right? Like, I recognize that Jujutsu Kaisen and uh, Demon Slayer probably have, like, the highest quality animation and anime out there right now. Because those two are probably roughly similar. I'd honestly give specific scene animation over to Jujutsu Kaisen, but I'd give overall animation quality consistency to Demon Slayer, which I prefer. So I actually would vote that one higher, because I would prefer that everything looks smooth and continuous even if it's bad compared Mm -hmm. to having what happens in a lot of ones like one piece or naruto where you'll have one really like important scene that's well animated for like a minute and then i want to talk about dragon ball super as well oh yeah but they <laughs> fucked that up even in the middle of the big fight. Uh, they they were they just were they were rushed and that's the other thing i always pull back and i'm like you you have to understand that the reason Demon Slayer is able to look this good is it doesn't release weekly. It yeah. only releases weekly for a short amount of time, and then it keeps going. And that's fine if you don't want to consider that. And then they did this movie now to kind of lead up in from after the because 
after the season ended, which is different because I've uh, the, the anime doesn't usually do that. They they actually did the whole season. And after the first season, it, it led up into this movie. And so now after the movie, yeah. now I guess they're going back into a, a second uh, season here. I think the reason they so don't do that time. was difference in times back in the day. Like back in the day, you never knew if you were getting serialized again next yeah. week. You know what I mean? You could get canceled next week, finish this season and be done. Yeah. Whereas animes like these, especially like Demon Slayer, which is very, very popular, very, very uh, yeah, one lucrative. of the top number ones that they're saying, I think, right now. Oh, for... Yeah, sure. Uh, it did better last year or the year before. The problem is Demon Slayer ended. Yeah, it's which done, is right? Which is why it's got its boom, because okay. it ended. So yeah, everybody okay. went out, bought the last chapters. Everybody uh, who finished it said, else. well, then all the people who don't read anything till they finished went and bought it. <clears throat> and that's not to say that it isn't good, because it's absolutely good, and it does good numbers, and it goes, you know kind of up and down with everybody else but uh attack on titan i think was another sold big out. one this year yeah, they, they sold out their, their last uh, issue and they had, now yep. they have to go back to second print yep which is good i mean i'm i'm <laughs> always happy to see any manga do really well because basically the only one who ever does consistently well is the the one that's not popular in america which is yeah it's it's unfortunate because there are really really good anime out there that just don't yeah. get the light that they deserve. Yeah, there's a yeah, like I said, I, I'll I'll find some very like weird, not like weird ones, but just ones that like mm -hmm. you know not normal people would probably be well, watching. Even just something you wouldn't stumble across because yeah. it's not super mainstream. I mean, there's oh. tons and tons of really good anime that aren't action based, even such as oh, uh, oh. Doctor Stone is a good example. Oh, I love Doctor Stone. Me and Isaiah so watch that. fun. I loved. <laughs> The manga so much because while it's not perfectly scientifically accurate, it endeavors to very heavily explain how science works while doing. I love stories like that. Any story that is entertaining you and teaching you something, like automatically gets more points in my book. Just like an extra, t like immediately. Uh, I like Golden Kamui because of that, and I don't even have to care about it. Honestly, like Golden Kamui was about the native Japanese population. That was like the basis of what you were learning and what was underlying the story. I, I don't really give a shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm never going to use that information, right? Like when I go oh. to Japan in one year and go to meet the natives. I don't know. But otherwise, I just thought it was really cool that it's like, all right, it can teach you something and still have a good story. It's the other one that does the same thing like that's the I I have been I watched the first episode and I liked it, but I, I got to get back uh, into it. You'd have Someone to tell me the body. Uh, where the body. Work. Yep, sells at work. There we go. Sells at work. Although I will say <laughs> sells at work. Yeah, a little bit too for uh Golden Kamui is a little more action packed than Doctor Sun or Doctor Stone. Not to say yeah. Doctor Stone doesn't have action or fighting. No, stuff, just, but it, it does. It just has more of it's you just know a different focus. Yeah, which is cool. I mean, I I enjoyed it. Like I said, I like new ideas in anime and manga because we really do get so many repetitions of the same old thing. Oh yeah, to Dragon the, Ball. <laughs> well, it, formula. <laughs> it's always killing me too because uh as part of like the older manga crowd and stuff you know and the older anime crowd having watched like ninja scroll and shit like that back in the day even that like things or even you know fist of the north star all these things where oh, all of the original points. anime like people are always like oh man that's so dragon ball z i was like oh it's technically actually so fist of the north star if you're talking yeah. about long yelling charging like fights that. and it's not to 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 diminish dragon ball z in any way but it's when uh the new generation pulls back on the old generation is like it always reminds me of that one is like oh that sounds really cool what is that it's like oh this is uh pressure oh man i think they copied it from vanilla ice <laughs> it's kind of like that you know what i mean where yeah. i'm like oh man it just just kills me inside a little bit i'm just <laughs> like they're so like I and I'm not disparaging the new ones either, right? Like what I'm saying is that uh this is a great thing that you love from <sighs> this and you'd probably like the thing that it was inspired by as well. Right. Cuz like right. that's what I tell people is like if you enjoy Dragon Ball Z, you probably like the newer version of North of Fist of the North Star. Probably yeah. not the 60s version, but 
my friend tried to show me those and i was like i can't get into this bro like there's there's some anime like they're just so I just, old I just, and, uh, I just, I just, the voice no. acting i think is the bigger I issue know, i think that's what it is it's when we watch the dev version it's like bro, i can't do it bro. you this gotta is... do the japanese version every time for those there's no doing the english the thing, here, do. <laughs> here's the funny thing and i could be wrong about the exact person but i believe that the alternative fake dubbed version of dragon ball z is the go- guy who voices Goku is the guy who does the new voices for Fist of the North Star guy. Oh. And he does the same voice. So he does <laughs> when Goku's fighting. Gosh. <laughs> so I think it's a lot because if Goku did that, you'd be you'd be off Dragon Ball Z like that. <laughs> Tell me not. Right? If, if Sean Shemmel's silky smooth voice wasn't just ah. <laughs> He's got a good voice, so, you know. And I always, I always say when people say like, "Oh, dubs so unsuperior," I'm like, "Really? Have you like honestly listened to these new voice actors? Like, like it's not they do always such a good job nowadays." The, on, the on thing this. is, is I've, with the exception of Dragon Ball Z, I've never found a English dub that is entirely better than its Japanese version. Mm-hmm. I feel like with with no exceptions and voices, pretty much. I prefer all of the English versions of Dragon Ball Z's voice actors. I yeah, prefer English Goku, English Vegeta, English Piccolo, English Go, all of it. Mm-hmm. But in other shows, even ones with really good voice acting, such as My Hero Academy, yeah, they've done some good. Yeah, some where, good ones. where I prefer the English version of Deku's yeah. voice actor, right? Personally, I'm sure other people feel whichever which yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, there's other yeah preference for sure. Yeah, I, I like All Might's better. In... Oh, I love All Might's voice, bro. Like I, I like it, but the thing that hurt me is he got an award for it, and he was basically just doing his fucking general voice he'd done his whole damn career. Yeah, how that just that was uh, like I remember when it's like Sean Shemble on t- Twitter. It's like thank oh, you so it's, much. It's, oh yeah, okay, yeah. I was gonna say, isn't what's his name, Chris? Or not? No, it is Chris Sabat. Sorry, or yeah. no, yeah, it's the guy who faces Vegeta. Sorry, it's just because we were just talking about Goku. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, go. but with with that one, it was like, oh, thank you so much. This is the best voice acting job I've ever done. And Vegeta's just crying in the corner like you son of a bitch. Bro, you did me dirty. You did me dirty. And We've once again, what's... For twi- for, oh, twi- almost 20 years. <laughs> and that's what roughs me up is he's been in so much and used that voice before. Yeah. That very specific. That There are a couple very tiny alterations that make it distinctly All Might. And maybe those tiny distinct alterations were the key. I don't know. Maybe that was a secret ingredient. But I, I was just insulted that it took that long for him to get the I award. I I mean, okay. H- having said that, it I really do like the Japanese voice actor for All Might. It, it's, there's cer- a couple of P- Japanese voice actors that I recognize, and that's one of them. And he's one of my favorite Japanese voice actors. Okay. I need to learn their names at some point. But then I have to like remember Japanese names too. I can't remember yeah, English that's names. Hard, I know. No, I, I took English names too. I'm just like, what? What was your name again? So, I can't even pronounce it. What, what, I can barely <laughs> pronounce my name. No, but, but I don't know. It, it, it's uh, it's interesting, man. Like, there's always an up and down on him. But I never discount the English version unless it's bad. Yeah, if it's bad, it's bad, then I don't watch it. And to sure be fair, I don't think I've seen a bad English dub in over five years. Oh, because they're just the the technology's there now. Well, and I, I think it's just a more lucrative field. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, popular, it's popular up here now than it was. We back were in the day, up. you would rather be on a Looney Tunes cartoon than an yeah, anime. It'd just be more money for you. Be like, what are you watching, anime? I'm like, this is this is nonsense. I'm like, yeah, it's so good though. You should watch it. <laughs> I try to tell my pops all the time. Like, we, closet, we were watching it late at night because that was the only time we could even watch it. Was late at night, being in the closet. Mm-hmm. I was just like watching over there. <laughs> well, it's not even just that. Remember, they didn't play anime until a certain time of night on Toonami. It was yeah. like seven yeah. or eight o'clock at least. Yeah, it was. And it ran until midnight. So if you wanted to watch the good shit, like Yu Yu Hakusho or something, I stay up a little late. A little bit later. We were a little bit. It was. Like, it was definitely a niche culture, and people who pretend like I see it now, where they're like, oh. You didn't get bullied for watching anime. You got bullied for Naruto running. I was like, nah. I got bullied because people were too dumb to realize that uh, just because it has a different language, it doesn't mean it's dumb. <laughs> it's like, that's the basis. Because it wasn't just that. Like, if I brought anything from anywhere that wasn't America, 
people would act that way, right? Like, right. they're just kind of like stuck in their ways. Like, you know, poutine is a good example of that. If you've ever had it, I, I don't know. I enjoy poutine, but I'm sure not everybody does. <laughs> um, How can you not like gravy, though? <laughs> I was going to go off my other list here. Um, <clears throat> let me see here. There's a lot. I know there was another couple of things here. Um, I know Invincible is going pretty hard. I'm liking that show still. Episode 7 was pretty good, I thought. Um, oh, and then we got that Conjuring. Um, I did see that they did a, yeah, a new Conjuring trailer. That'll be interesting. That one's done pretty well. That, and then um, the Lovelier, one. Deadlier Volume 2 is coming out uh, this May 14th. You know, the robots? Oh, the okay. They robots. did that. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, so I didn't know they changed the title. I thought it was just season two. Maybe I just, that's just the name that they, they put they're putting out. Yeah. I don't know. I'd seen the little thing where they were like, and everyone's in the comments is like, finally. And it's like, do you realize how hard it is to animate that shit? <laughs> Some of them are really like, really well done, man. I, I, I didn't even really enjoy all of, I mean, I guess no, nobody enjoys all of it. It's always like the ones you like, them, yeah. I enjoyed uh, specific ones, but what I was is always impressed by the animation. I'll always it looked good mm-hmm. like it didn't matter the style they picked they just put a lot of work into it and made it look good uh what else is coming out we obviously have loki coming soon i think when does loki come yeah out? I, was, I was gonna say yeah uh, but um june all right well no that one's a little bit away so we do have black widow and stuff as well um, did you check out the new Godzilla then that's coming out too as well? Another new one coming out? Is it the animated one? Yeah, it's an animated for Netflix. Is it in that series or is it a new series entirely? It's a whole brand new thing, actually. Nice. Uh, animated by a whole new team, I think even. Is it the it Planet looks... of the Monsters one? No, it's called uh, Godzilla Singular Point. Singular Point. It's supposed to come out this June. Looks really good, actually. Take a look. Oh, they just dropped the trailer a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it wasn't too long ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. They're doing it in this style. Interesting. Yeah, it looks good. It looks like uh, Devils of Part Time. (laughs) (laughs) Just a little bit the art to me. And then, Uh, uh, I mean, I'm always excited for good Godzilla stuff. Like, and to be fair, this is something I try to tell people. It's the kind of thing with Mortal Kombat because I'm waiting to see that next week at the theaters. Thanks, me too. I got it. Well, if you want, I don't know if we have room, but we're renting a theater out to go watch it next week. So. Oh, where are you guys going, though? I don't know, actually. I probably should check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah. Let me know, and then uh, we can, uh, you know, pitch in on it, and then we'll... Uh, oh, yeah, I think that's it's pretty, pretty much covered. We're basically just inviting people to fill in the extra spots. The extra spots, cause, okay. Because we're, we're, I'm not sure we have room, which is why I'm like, let me check. But if we do, yeah, yeah. I'll let you know let in the next uh, couple days. Cause I think it's like twenty six people are the limit. Yeah, I think, I think that's only, like, yeah. I think my general immediate family is basically like eighteen or nineteen, something like that. Okay. Yes, that's maybe, so. maybe a little more if everybody shows up. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I it's it's unknown. But my thing is, is like I don't know if it's possible to, unless you do it intentionally, make a bad Mortal Kombat movie. No. Like, I mean, I, this new one, I heard it was half and half. Like, I heard the critics hated it, but then yet the audience was loving it. Which is weird, because, like, I've just seen a lot of kind of mix. Like, I've yeah, seen people in the mixed. comics runs kind of trashing it. I've seen regular people kind of enjoying it. And that's the other thing I try to always gauge is I'll, like, check the comic forums. And then I'll just check my regular friends and see what they said. Because, like, I feel like the comic community has a totally different perspective just, than the general like, community. It's still too hardcore in it sometimes. And the thing to me... And the thing that pisses me off the most, especially as someone who is pretty decently knowledgeable about Mortal Kombat in general, from playing all the games excessively to reading the comics to, you know what I mean, doing research on fuck. On never saw just on my own just to just to learn about all the little cool things they used to slip into their games because they were some of the original guys who did uh like secret show ups yeah. or I mean, still you know still oh, he's around absolutely and he still does all that stuff and he still makes a great video game i'm just saying like when i see people get so insulted over something they probably don't know the first thing about besides the last game they played uh-huh. like 
most people could not tell you the actual origin story stuff from the original comic. I'll tell you right now, bro. I'm like, I don't know who, like, I know a little bit here and there. I'm like, I right. don't no, know. Right, and, and because it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> it doesn't. That, exactly, because it doesn't matter. What matters is these people are here with superpowers beating the sh- each other to death. That yeah. is what matters in Mortal Kombat. I'm sorry to say, like, you could have made a Mortal Kombat movie with zero plot and done just fine. And, and I heard the fatalities are, like, brutal in this movie. I, so I was just watching some of the, like, intro. Like, the, they did that seven-minute intro, which I tried not to watch the whole thing. because I, oh, yeah, I heard Cena too, and I was like, oh, stay away from me. <laughs> I, I did a little because I was thinking of showing some of it for the intro thing. And to be fair, it does actually look like kind of what I basically thought it was anyway. So it's not like I'm super surprised. And I've, I've made sure not to, like, spoil too, too much. I just, like, hit a couple parts. And I was like, okay, okay, good. But once again, like, realistically, Mortal Kombat is not about the story, even though it writes great stories for its, for its games, in my opinion. It's not about the dudes who, or the actors or the actresses, honestly. With the exception of if it's about their background, right? Like, Sonya Blade could be any race or any color. That doesn't really matter. That's not imperative to her background, so it doesn't matter. Like, I'm sure people will get offended if they do stuff like that, because they get offended over everything. But realistically, Sonya Blade's background is not contingent upon where she comes from or her race or any of that shit. Whereas, like, Liu Kang, right, is from the Tibetan (laughs) Alamug, has been there, is... Right. So that I can a little more understand, but relatively speaking, with exceptions of that, or, you know, the fact that Shao Kahn's from Outworld, what the f- what are you going to do to fuck it up? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it looks good. I, like I said, I seen uh, somebody posted a little gif of one of the fatalities. It's like, damn, I shouldn't have pressed that. I shouldn't oh, have pressed man. It. It's so, but gifs are so rough to. And it, it look, but yeah, just seeing that one gif, I was like, oh my gosh, this, yeah, it's going to be brutal for sure. So. Um, that's all I really care about. Like I said, yeah, I just want to see if it's going to be good fight scenes, good, you know, uh, maybe hopefully somewhat of a good story. Out that, but if, other than that, I'm just seeing them more combat. I want to see fatalities, time. man. I want to see <laughs> people's heads explode and eyes get popped. And to be fair, my only big fear is that they put too much into the trailers, right? Because they had a ton of good shit in just like I was excited, man. I, I thought they looked really good on fatalities. I was a little bummed that they left Johnny Cage out, but other than that, yeah, I really don't that's give a shit. Thing I was kind of weirded out that you would think that he's like an original, yeah, you know? Yeah, he's a pretty big selling that. character for him. I just don't understand the the I reason. Just him in somehow, I mean, he is kind of like this Hollywood character, but then I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, why I feel like it was. I, once again, I haven't watched the movie, so I don't know what choices they made. To we'll see. yeah, but what I what I do think is that it's. Maybe something people may not be happy about, but it's not something that's like it's not Johnny Cage was no, dead at the that. at the beginning of the second Mortal Kombat movie. He literally <laughs> dies in like five minutes, and that's actually true in the games too. I think. And Liu Kang was dead for a couple games. You know what I mean? So it's eh, yeah. You know, it's like it's Mortal Kombat is great, and these are great characters. But Mortal Kombat, shit, Mortal Kombat's most popular character, Sub Zero. Yeah. So it's yeah. Inle- unless you got rid of Sub Zero, I don't or and I mean Scorpion now. I know, mean those are probably the two that pre- you probably have to kind of have. I I'd assume Scorpion. because of the mask. <laughs> but aside from those two, everybody else is kind of just filler for yeah. fun, and they do yeah. generally change. I mean, there are very consistent characters who de- who make it into most Mortal Kombat games. But there are very very few characters that are in legitimately every single Mortal Kombat game. Right, Lu Kang's not. Uh, I don't think. Uh, I don't think Johnny is. I think Sonya might actually be in every single Mortal Kombat. Not, <laughs> not including Sub Zero's adventure game or the uh Kung, Kung Lao and Lu Kang game or the Scorpion game. I think they made a Scorpion game. I don't know. Not including those games, just including the main Mortal Kombat rosters. I don't think she's missed a single run. So, well, for my last note here is, uh, did you see now that Zack Snyder's uh, Army of the Dead movie that's coming for Netflix it's supposed to come I, out May 21st? Yeah, I think we had talked about that one. That was the one with Batista, right? 
Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. in that. It looks one. good, actually. Uh, once it again, I think yeah. Zack Snyder is an entirely capable director who can make great movies in the right genre. And I think yeah. that genre was fine for him. Dark, kind of comedy ish, seems like. Yeah. Which I, like I, I honestly don't see a ton too. of, ton of, ton of comedy from Zack Snyder, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. No. If anything, I think it would. The thing is, comedy is exists in those heavy parts because of like contrast like if it's dark and dreary the whole movie it's less dark and dreary mm -hmm. but i i think he'd do just fine like i said i'd love to see Zack snyder do direct a moon knight film i I'd think he did yeah i can't I, wait like to that, that one's I, coming I, closer. i'd love yeah i am pretty happy about moon knight i love moon knight moon knight did is you like Batman the actors the theme? what's that did you like who they picked as the actor for him I don't didn't even see. It was uh, I think the guy who played Poe uh, Damrio or whatever from Star Wars. Really? Or, uh, was it him? All right. Who will be cast? Moon Knight. Was it him? Praise Ponchu. Marvel Studios has found Oscar Isaac. Yeah, Oscar Isaac. But is that the same guy? I, I, I'm not sure. I'm gonna go look at his thing because I don't remember. I, he looks familiar, but I'm not sure from what. Oh, I think that is uh, Poe Dameron. Let me double check him. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm looking for yes, Star Wars Poe Dameron. That's him. So I mean, he looks good. I think uh, that'd be a good uh, choice there. I I'm honestly not familiar with his body of work outside of that um, Star he's Wars. He did so. Ex Machina. Apparently, which I he's never seen that. He's in Spider Man that. Into the Spider Verse. Huh? <laughs> As like some random person, but it's just I thought that was funny. Um, he is going to be Solid Snake as well in Metal Gear Solid. Oh, yeah, I heard about that, too. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited. Shit, that. these come out oh, next year. Dune really? as well. I guess he's in that new Dune movie, too. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, yeah, I bet he, yeah. He is actually, yes. That's that's listed in there, I think, the Star Wars stuff. So he's, he's getting some, the, more, uh, he's, some more roles, it looks like. <laughs> yep, United and, oh, uh, he's in the Adams Family sequel. And he's Gomez <laughs> Adams, the voice. There we go, that's right, yeah. he was. So I mean I'm 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 fine with that. No. Once again, <laughs> I generally don't have real big problems with casting decisions. I do have problems sometimes with wardrobe and choice of like how you display them. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, I I, I think I don't even like the stuff with like uh what's her name being cast as the ancient one. Uh. Oh yeah, I know people were uh, real mad, and and I that. I can see being mad about that obviously for cancel culture or whatever or cultural appropriation, whatever you want to attribute it to. But I I I don't care if the ancient one's a guy or a girl. Really, it wasn't important to to their being the ancient one, right? Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't a big deal whether the ancient one was a guy or a girl. They, they were just the ancient one. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, so, and then I guess with the last few of the things I want to go over just with some comics that I did read that were kind of, I think were important, maybe not as important as I thought they were. Have you been reading the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff? I don't think I have. So that you made Star Lord a God now. Uh, I did hear about that from the Null stuff. I think so it was pretty it. crazy though, like the way they did it, because you remember, I don't know if, oh, I guess you weren't reading the news stuff, but, like, he was fighting, like, um, like, uh, Zeus and all of them, but, like, they were reborn, I guess. I can't, it's been a while since I read those last days, but anyways, they got reborn, and, uh, he ended up banishing them, like, through this dark hole or black hole or whatever, and he got sucked with them in it. So he ends up literally, like, in this other dimension where he's been there for, like, oh my gosh, I think it was, like, he said, like, 700 years or something like that. But like he wasn't aging, you know, very much in this other realm. And he even had a kid there, had a wife, had a whole other freaking life over there. And then so I forget how he got back over to them. And so now there's this whole thing where like Gamora is like, you know, trying to be, you know, with him still again and wants him to be the same one. But he's like, I'm not. No, I'm I'm a different man. Now. <laughs> After I'm a whole different person. I've seen things, Gamora. But uh, they they made them pretty. I mean, we'll see. You check it out. They they did some pretty cool things, like his gun, his elemental gun, pretty cool. Um, right. But what I mean, I've, I've always enjoyed Guardian stuff, thing. even before they switched to their new stuff. So so they made him all macho good. too. Now he's got long hair and he's got his chest all showing, and he's got this like medallion all on. <laughs> 
but uh yeah that's i mean funny. it's been a pretty good uh good little series um that's been pretty good um i did want to say think was there anything that you read that was like really striking to you uh, what was i reading that came really? out this week last week yeah that's what i'm trying to remember because i've been re i've been trying to catch up on a bunch of yeah, stuff I've one of them is the, always the x-men yeah. trying to catch up on all the different oh damn titles so, so many to be fair but, most of them are halfway decent and they're going back into the next uh arc i think because they've yeah, just people, been in between uh, arcs Hickman was uh ending but no they were like no it's just rebooting with x-men but like with a it's still under hickman's reign but he's just going to do something else i said to you know with more with the x-men stuff so We'll see how. Once again, he's out. he's gonna have free reign on the X Men until they take it away. So, and as long as they keep selling comics, they'll let him keep writing it. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, but other than that, I mean, I don't have anything else. There was uh, what's that? Uh, it was Eternals. Eternals. Has yeah, been I, really I read good. the first issue. I got to catch up on the. I those really ones. enjoyed it. I think that the um the tone is that they're telling the story is good. You know, that it has a much heavier kind of old school tone almost, but not as many words, you know, still pretty word heavy except for something newer, but I feel like yeah, it's... I, the first issue kind of lost me for a little bit because I was like, I have no clue who these characters are. And I was like, they're talking like, yeah, it was going Which is funny because I thought they did a really good job because I'm not super familiar with the Eternals. Me I'm neither. pretty decently familiar, like in their in the popular Eternals, right? I could tell you about Eros, and I could tell you about some of the more popular Eternals, but I thought they did a pretty good job. It's, it, it actually super reminded me of Hickman's stuff, because they had a lot of panels yeah, were where there were, like, informational graphs, where it was yeah. like, you know, this is the, these are the current Eternals, and this is the Eternal Hatchery area, and it was very, very much reminded me of Hickman's writing. Like, even the way they were, like, this is the hatchery, which is secluded between however many particles beneath the South Pole or some shit. Um, the one thing I did think is, well, it's good about is I'm happy because Invincible is super good and I'm enjoying it. But I'm sad because next week is the last episode of the season. Yeah, I know. I will say they finally got to a point where I can read ahead in the comic again because I caught up to where I was in the co It took, I caught up. I watched like the first two or three episodes, right? However many they released. I read like the first 20 chapters and then I had to stop and wait for them until now because that's how much was in between. And it wasn't like I read super fast or it was like a super lot going on. They just had a lot more context in these comic episodes in a lot of cases or in mm -hmm. the cartoon episodes. So I think they can do it. Really you know, job. Robert Kirkman does pretty good, like going more to about delving into his characters more i'm pretty sure you know with walking dead you know kind of yeah being kind I mean, of its own thing too at, 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 you know at one as you know towards the end basically <laughs> yeah but, uh, other than that yeah we should pro I'd probably guess end it here huh <laughs> yeah it's getting to that time but thanks again for joining me on uh you know the episode hopefully people at home were happy as well and we'll see what next week brings because we'll have the last episode of invincible more comics and a bunch of other great stuff so yeah, we'll see you guys next time on Comic Convos. Yeah. If you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve. So please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month.